So, anyway, dahil wala pang suspension si Mayor Isko, ay continue, continue ang laban natin ngayong umaga na ito. So, for this morning, our topic is about the endogenic processes. Last time, we discussed about exogenic process. So, as you have seen, ang pinagkaiba lang nila ay yung prefix na nila. Exogenic, exo and endo. Again, when you say exogenic, exo from the word, from the prefix itself, exo meaning outside. So, we are referring to the outermost layer of the earth, which is the earth's crust. So, these are the processes, these are the geologic processes that happens within the earth's crust lamp. So, we have the, uh, the weathering, weathering, erosion, transportation, deposition, and litification. So, these, those are the five process or geologic processes that took place within the earth's crust. Simply, that is exogenic process. This time, our discussion is about the endogenic process. So, here... The word is endo, the prefix is endo, meaning inside. So we are uh, our discussion would focus on the different geologic processes that takes place within the internal layers of the earth, specifically in the mantle and the, the core, outer core and inner core. So for this discussion, the learning competencies are the following. So describe where the earth's internal heat come from, comes from and describe how magma is formed. So basically, this is actually a call, this discussion all, all already covers week six, week five and week six rather. So week five and week six na ito until next week na. So pwedeng possible by next week, possible lang ha, I'm not, I'm not sure yet. Depende kung tayo ay maghahabol sa discussion so on. Pwedeng mag hindi tayo magkaroon ng synchronous meeting next week, uh, magbibigay na lang ako ng asynchronous activity and so on. So, with regards to that, I guess ko na lang depending kung uh, yung time ba natin upon checking doon sa timetable ko later ay suitable ba na hanggang December 12 ay matapos natin yung discussion for uh, the earth science so that by the, by the second quarter ay makamove na tayo sa life science or pure biology na for the second quarter. So we'll see to the, uh, kung maabot natin at kung ano yung mga topics na mandidiscuss natin hanggang December 12. Okay, so with these learning competencies, dito magre-revolve yung ating discussion. So, to start with, I have here a picture of, a rather picture, a video of erupting volcano. As we have all known, the molten material spewed out from the volcano is extremely hot. Right? Diba? Mainit itong temperature na ibinubuga the volcano during eruption and this this molten material as we have all known it's the uh, lava but when it's still inside the volcano it is called as magma but the question is why is the earth's interior hot or, or why is this magma hot so this is the focus of our discussion we will try to explore as to what is the reason or what are the reason why is the Earth's interior, the, the internal layers of the Earth, uh, has a extreme temperature? Now, um, this is actually the overview. Overview ito, but rad, uh, so overview na ito, i-discuss natin yung, kumbaga ang, ang ating target o ating ginamit na system ay general to specific. So, deductive time ngayon. Ha? So, we have here the Earth's internal heat. Now, the Earth's internal heat or the heat emitted by the Earth itself is important to sustain life. So life, of, from, life from microorganisms to macroorganisms. So from very small organisms, from bacteria to uh, a huge or a giant blue whale. So of course, including us humans, na yung kasama nandito sa life. So as you have all known, um, sun is the major source of energy am i right so we are we already knew about it that it's the sun who gave us the energy but of course um since we are the het we are the heterotrophs we cannot use the sun the energy by uh, emitted by the sun alone no but rather we use uh, we it we depend no rather we depend on sa other organisms such as plants which are said to be the autotrophs, no? para sila, doon tayo nakakuha sa kanila ng 
energy. Anyway, uh, we are all familiar that sun is the main source of energy. But aside from that, our earth, you know, the earth itself, produces heat. May nire-release ding heat, may nire-release ding energy mismo ang ating earth. Now, we will explore ano yung nagiging sources of heat na nire-release mismo ng earth. So, aside from sustaining life, the earth's internal heat is also important or is also significant for a different geologic process to happen. So, what are the different geologic process? We have number one, uh, of course, the volcanic eruption. Um, volcanic eruption, as we are all familiar with, it releases enormous amount of energy. So, yung molten material nga. The mo that molten material has extreme temperature. Ngayon, um, ano, ngayon yung, ano yung source? No? An saan lang gagaling yung init na nire-release during volcanic eruption? That is by the Earth itself. So, next, aside from volcanic eruption, the Earth's internal heat is important for this geologic process. Ano kaya yung ko na geologic process dito? What is this, by the way? Yung pag-move po ng continental plates. Okay, correct. So, this is actually a pangaya, or the super, or the massive continent, the super continent. So, billion years ago, 4.5 to 4.6 billion years ago, that was the estimated age of the Earth. Um, the continents, the, the seven continents that we have right now, or we have at the present times, I before, wala sila, no? Uh, they are just one, one lang sila before, a massive continent lang sila. So, it looks like a puzzle, as you, as, as you can see here dito sa picture na to. So, yung massive continent na yan that was, uh, that was called as Pangea because of a geologic process, specifically the, the earthquake, the earthquake drives, with, drives the separation of the continents or of the supercontinents. The supercontinents divided into, uh, of course, into different continents. Right now, we have seven continents. But before the formation of the seven continents, yung Pangea na separate muna into two, the Laurasia and the Gondwana land. So I hope you are familiar with that kasi yun yung dinis kasi yun nung grade 10. So yung, yung Pangea divided into two, we have the Laurasia and the Gondwana land. And the Laurasia and Gondwana land divided into its uh, different continents so forming the seven continents that we have right now. So what are the seven continents, by the way? Can you please name the seven continents? Please name one. Asia. Hapsai, I will meet you, ha? Africa, Pomis. Okay, we have Asia, Africa. What else? North and South America. Okay, North and South America. So we have the four. Antarctica. Antarctica, correct. correct. Europe. And what's Europe. And the last Australia. one is Asian. Australia. So these are the seven major continents. Now, the formation of the seven continents is caused by the sudden shifting of the ground or the sudden movement of the tectonic phase, which is, which is basically the earthquake. Earthquake is a geologic process. Now, what drives the earthquake or the formation of the earthquake? And that is caused by the Earth's internal heat. Now, the question is, what are the sources of uh, internal heat or yung, uh, Earth's internal heat? So, we have two. We have the primordial heat and we have the radioactive heat. So this is actually the focus of our discussion, the two categories of internal heat source of the Earth, the primordial heat and the radioactive heat. So let us first discuss what is a primordial heat. So when you say primordial heat, basically from the word subprime or primary, ibig sabihin sinauna or bago or pinagmulan. Parang ganun yung concept. No? So, um, I would like to ask mga lin Mark Uno to please read what is a primordial heat. Is Mark Uno, mga lindan, present or not? Ayan. Mark Uno, please read what is a primordial heat. Okay, 
Okay, please read Mark 1. Rinig po ako, ma'am. Yes. Primordial heat. Heat from accretion. Accretion and bombardment of the earth during the early stages of formation. Okay, thank you for that. Now, uh, what is a primordial heat from the definition gave the to Saturday slide? So, all you have to remember is yung word na accretion and bombardment. So, when you say accretion, ito yung pagkakadikit-dikit. Hindi ka? While bombardment naman, pagbabanggaan. So, every time na nagkakaroon ng banggaan, of course, nagkakaroon ng uh, friction. And friction releases enormous amount of heat. Now, look at this. It's the hammer and the nail. Now, what uh, ano yung common observation ninyo hang, uh, habang pinupukpok ng martilyo yung nail? O kahit sa hindi sa nail, kahit yung martilyo na lang, yung metal surface ng uh, hammer, pag pinupukpok mo ito sa any surface, after a couple of minutes or after a couple of time, ano yung may mararamdaman ninyo doon sa metal surface ng hammer? May init po. Okay, may init na. May init na nare-release. So, kasi yun nga yung tinatawag natin as friction. Now, paano natin i-apply ito sa um, primordial heat na tinutukoy natin? So, before, this picture is not of the sun. Itong bilog na ito, yung malaki. It's not the sun, but it's the earth. So, bakit ganyan yung kanyang itsura? So, before na, uh, ito kasi yung common itsura natin ng earth, di ba? the blue-green planet. But before maging ganyan yung appearance ng ating, o yung itsura ng ating Earth, ganito muna yung kanyang itsura. Look at this. No? So, ngayon, ano yung nag-cause ng ganitong appearance niya? Yung Earth natin actually ay caused by accretion of the asteroids. Hindi di So, asteroids are rock pieces that are floating doon sa outer space. At up until now, meron pa rin mga asteroids na napo-float above, oh, rather doon sa outer space. Now, itong mga asteroids na yan, nagkaroon ng accretion. Accretion means nagkadikit-dikit. Nagkaroon ng bombardment. Nagbanggaan. So, yung mga asteroids or yung mga rock pieces that are floating out, uh, out sa outer space ay nagkaroon ng accretion. So, nagkaroon ng banggaan. And because doon, nagkaroon ng bombardment during the early stages of the Earth, ay nag -re release ito ng uh, heat. And that heat is what we call the accretional heat. Didihan? So, kung makita ninyo sa appearance na ito, this is the early stages of the Earth. This is in the Hedion uh, era. Di ba sa Greek mythology yata yun? I don't know. Yung Hedion ay nagpa-represent sa pinaka ma uh, mainit. No? Ito yung era na mainit yung, uh, yung Earth natin mismo. Of course, My, uh, life is impossible to happen during that time. So, ito yung mga early, early years pa ng ating Earth. So, kung makikita ninyo, itong mga gray na yan, yung mga flakes niya, parang flakes, yan yung mga rocks na nag-bombard, na, na nagdikit-dikit, nagkaroon ng collision, yun, that, that is the word. So, nagkaroon ng collision, and then yung orange naman na yan, yan yung mga uh, heat, and uh, of course, during the bombardment, nagre-release ng heat and that is, uh, that heat already capable para mag-melt down yung mga rocks. So, nagtutunaw yung ilang portion ng rocks. And that's why ito actually, yung mga orange na yan, nagre-represent na sa magma. Sa magma na makikita doon sa mantel. So, sa Earth natin, our Earth uh, has four distinct layers. It has mantel, outer core, and inner core. And each layer has a different um, estimated temperature. Of course, the temperature for the Earth's crust may vary. It depends on the time and it depends on the place. So let's say, for example, sa tropical countries such as the Philippines, ano ba yung uh, normal temperature natin dito sa Pilipinas? Di ba parang 30 degrees Celsius or 29 and so on? 31, yun yung normal or yung average temperature natin dito sa Pilipinas, sa tropical countries. But when you go out, when you go to other countries, Let's say, let's say sa mga Antarctic and so on, mababa in temperature nila, di ba? So, minsan pa nga, umaabot ng um, 
pwedeng 5 degrees Celsius and so on, capable na magkaroon ng formation ng ice and so on. So, yung temperature ng Earth's crust ay depende. Depending on the time, depending on the place. While for the mantle, as you go deeper the layers of the Earth, the temperature increases. So, the, te the estimated temperature for the mantle is 4,000 degree Celsius. That is the estimated temperature. And when you go in a uh, deeper pa sa outer core, the, the temperature is 5,000 degree Celsius. Inner core has a 6,000 degree Celsius. That is almost the same temperature sa surface ng sun. So, kung makikita ninyo, yun, uh, pag habang lumalalim, tumataas din yung temperature. Ngayon, sa case na to, because of the accretion, of the asteroids, so yung mga rock pieces na yun in the bombardment, during the early stages of the Earth or formation of the Earth, it releases a tremendous amount of heat energy called as the accretional heat. Now, during that time, during the early stages, life is impossible. Tapos ito yung heat yung era. No, Nag-represent doon sa era na sobrang init ng Earth and life is impossible. But luckily, Etong Earth natin mismo na ito ay nag-starts to cool down billion years ago. So, lumamig na lumamig yung planet Earth natin until such time na itong mga flakes na ito ay nagkaroon ng solidification. Take note, um, laging parallel o laging magkasama yung cooling and solidification. So, pa nagkaroon ng process of cooling, nag-harden din. Tama, di ba? So, etong mga uh, flakes na yan ay nag-starts to harden, forming the continents or first the first time ay yung una muna ay yung super continents na meron tayo so forming the super continents called as pangea and then um after a couple of times or after a couple of years yung yung at uh, yung super continents na yun, ay of course nag divide na because of different geologic classes and so on so ito na ngayon yung itsura ng earth na alam nating lahat but before na ito yung maging itsura niya yung kanina ito yung Ito yung early picture ng Earth natin because of the accretional heat. And that is one of the source of uh, Earth's internal heat, the primordial heat. Basically, the primordial heat are present doon sa mantle. Ang mantle natin ay made up of magma. So, itong mga orange na yan ay yung mga magma. Clear? Next, aside from primordial heat, we have another source. We have the radioactive heat. So, it is the heat generated by long-term radioactive decay. So this time, it has something to do with the radioactive elements. Now, um, in chemistry or in the periodic table, we have 118 elements. But not all 118 elements are said to be radioactive elements. Ilan lang, no? Ilan lang yung mga radioactive elements natin or yung mga elements that possess a high or greater amount of radiation. Take note, when a person exposed to a high amount of radiation, it could cause you mutation. Makakaroon ng mutation sa iyong uh, genes, no? sa iyong chromosomes, and so on. So this time, yung radioactive heat, sabi ko nga, ay may kinalaman sa mga radioactive elements. Now, can you give me an example of a radioactive elements? Mayroon ba kayong mga alam na radioactive elements? Okay, I would give you one, ah. One uh, example is uranium. Uranium is said to be a radioactive element. Ano pa kaya? Oh, pag tumingin kayo sa periodic table, mag-search kayo sa Google and so on, we have plutonium, titanium, yan, einsteinium, and so on. So those are the radioactive elements. Now, these radioactive elements are important in the production of a radioactive Heat. Take note, ang mga radioactive elements ay makikita sa inner core. No, ang outer core natin ay binubuo o are made up of iron and nickel. Iron and nickel are not radioactive elements. So, uh, ang mga radioactive elements ay makikita lamang sa inner core. So, we have uranium, insanium, uh, uh, plutonium, titanium, and so on. So, yun yung mga radioactive elements. Now, paano ngayon nagpaproduce yung heat? Look at this diagram. So, we have here the parent isotope. <clears throat> so, the parent isotope is said to be unstable. Let's say, for example, this is uranium. 
So, yung isotope na natin dito, it refers to the number of proton and electrons serve, uh, orbiting around the nucleus of the atom. So, let's say this is the uranium. Now, yung uranium na yan ay kailangan mag-undergo ng process of radioactive decay, mabubulok. No? So, as it goes through the process, ang purpose na talaga para mag- uh, para bakit siya mag-undergo ng radioactive decay is to produce a daughter isotope. So, yung daughter isotope na meron ng different numbers of protons and uh, neutrons doon uh, circling around the nucleus. So, let's say, take note ha, same product pa rin to o same atom pa din. So, kung ito yung, kung ang parent isotope ay si uranium, um, pag nag-undergo siya ng radioactive decay, ang mapuproduce pa rin daughter isotope ay uranium but it has a different number na ng proton and ng neutron. So, in the process ng radioactive decay, may nare-release na heat. Look at this. So, as it goes to the process of radioactive decay, may nare-release na heat. And that heat is what we call the radiogenic heat. Now, this heat is uh, now responsible para mag-maintain ng init sa earth natin. So, kung, if you have watched already the video, yung uniqueness of the earth, Nandun yun sa YouTube, na, sa YouTube channel ko, yung uniqueness of the earth. Why is uh, earth unique? Diba isa doon sa mga characteristic combination ko is the presence of the earth's magnetic field. By the way, upon uh, using that video, ano yung purpose ng earth's magnetic field? Nagkaklasi ako! Okay, ano yung purpose ng Earth's magnetic field? Doon sa video na yun. No one can still remember. The Earth's magnetic field. Okay. There it is. The Earth's magnetic field is responsible para doon sa mag-protect sa atin sa mga solar flares or mga solar flakes na binilinirilis ng sun. Kaya nga nagkakaroon. Oh, so once na yung solar flares na yon ay tumama doon sa Earth's magnetic field, ayun yung pagkumbaga yun yung shield natin eh. So kapag tumama yung um, solar flares doon sa uh, mga magnetic field na yun, nagkakaroon ng uh, doon? the northern lights and the southern lights. So yun yung, this, ano niya, yung although maganda, maganda talaga yung tura ng Aurora Borealis and Aurora Australis. But every time na nagaganap ang Aurora Borealis or Aurora Australis, that indicates na mayroong tumamang solar flares doon sa magnetic field natin. So basically, what I'm trying to say is that Earth's magnetic field is important. Of course, to protect us from harmful radiation. Now, um, ang, ano nga yun yung nagpuproduce o yung tumutulong para magproduce ng Earth's magnetic field? And that is the heat emitted during the radioactive decay. The outer or the inner core are made up of radioactive elements. Now, once these radioactive elements decay, it produces heat. Now, this heat is responsible for the production of Earth's magnetic field, and so on. Are we clear? Clear po po ba tayo doon? Yes po. Okay. So, yun po yung sources of Heat. We have the Earth's internal heat. We have the primordial heat and the radiogenic heat. Ulitin ko lang, pag primordial, ito yung heat uh, originated during the early stages of, or uh, during the oh. early formations of the Earth due to accretion of the rocks or the asteroid rocks. And the, radio, uh, the radiogenic heat is caused by the decay of the radioactive elements. And uh, that's all for that part. So let's now move with the second part. So are you all familiar with conduction, convection, and radiation? And ano ba yung conduction, convection, and radiation? Actually, ito yung lesson sinyo when, when you were in grade 7. But I don't know if you could still remember it. So we'll try to recall into this. Uh, what's that? Okay, we'll try to recall into, uh, to the different mode of transferring heat. So, it is a mode of heat transfer. Paano napapasa yung init? Because it has, uh, I have, to, I need to recall dito sa discussion na ito because it has something to do with uh, next discussion natin, yung topic natin, maya-maya. So, 
There are three modes of heat transfer. We have conduction, convection, and radiation. So, kung makikita nyo dito sa picture na ito, ito yung, ano ba tawag ito? Kasirola? O, kasirola ba ito? Or yung lutuan na uh, mayroong water sa loob, sa loob and pinapainit siya. So, unahin natin yung conduction. So, take note, metal is a good conductor of heat. Ibig sabihin, heat could easily pass through. Yan. So, ang, kapag naman heat could not easily pass, hindi madali mapapa, uh, that is what you call insulator. So, dahil ito ay metal, so madaling mapapasa yung init. So, let's say for example, itong handle na ito ay metal din. At ito of course ay metal. So, kapag itong pinapakulang tubig, tubig na ito ay nakatapat dun sa electric stove and so on. Kapag dinirectly hawak mo o using your bare hands, sinawakan mo itong metal handle na ito, ano yung may experience mo? Okay, ma mainit, mapapasok ka. Ibig sabihin, na-transfer sa iyo yung heat. From this object, no, na naramdaman mo yung heat. Ibig sabihin, nagkaroon ng heat transfer. Tinihan? So basically, when you say conduction, it's the transferring of heat with direct contact. Usually, solid to solid ito. Clear? So parang katulad din sa mga kuryente, ganun din. No? So... Sa kuryente, di ba, may mga cases like na kukuryente kayo o na electrocute, na electrocute kayo. So, yun yung ibig sabihin, may wrong conduction na naganap. Itinihan? Next, what uh, we have the radiation. Sa radiation naman, let's say this is the electric stove and so on. No, so, basically, kapag itong uh, may mga cases na hindi mo naman dinirectly hawakan itong stove na ito, pero nararamdaman mo yung init. Di ba? Kasi uh, napapasa sa'yo by gas. Kumbaga, yung init. Parang katulad pa nag-set kayo ng bonfire. Diba? So, hindi mo naman directly hina ito, hinahawakan yung apoy. Pero, kahit meron kang may distance ka mula doon sa bonfire, nararamdaman mo yung init because of radiation. Yung ganun din sa sun. Bakit yung sun, kapag, ma kapag uh, maaraw, no, ay nararamdaman na, siba, maangal kayo na ang init and so on. Kasi napapasa sa'yo yung heat through radiation. So, that is meant by radiation. While yung convection naman ay something to do with the liquid. No. Pwede liquid and pwede gas din to actually. So, we have here, kung makikita mo dito sa layer, ito, mayroong blue particles. <clears throat> Itong blue particles na ito ay nag-represent sa water molecule, which is basically cold. No? Cold water molecule. And then, yung red naman ay yung particles of water or water molecule na may warm temperature. So, sa case na to, kahit sabay mo silang inilagay, no, yung tubig inilagay mo sa, ano ba ito, kaserola na yan, and then yung kaserola ay inilagay mo doon sa may, sa ibabaw ng electric stove and so on. Ano yung mas uh, madaling iinit? Yung tubig na nasa itaas or yung tubig na nasa ibaba? Yung sa taas, ma'am. Okay, yun, yung tubig na nasa itaas ba? Tama ba yun? Nasa baba po. <clears throat> okay, dapat yung tubig na Kaya nasa ibaba. Kaya nagbaboy yung... Yes? Okay, dapat yung tubig na nasa ibaba. Yung... Kasi siya yung mas malapit eh. Kung baga no, siya yung uh, may direct, uh, direct contact. Pero kung, kung baga uh, mas malapit siya doon sa source of Heat. Ito, sa case na ito, ito yung electric stove. So, yung temperature na may warm nasa ibaba and then yung temperature na mas cold, na totally cold ba, ay nasa itaas. So, meron tayong tinitawag na natural phenomenon na convection current. As sabi ng convection current, warm material <clears throat> rises, cold material sinks. So, yung warm material daw ay umaakyat, yung, warm, yung cold material ay bumababa. So, hindi natin binibigyan na specifically na and ang binanggit ko, kung makikita na ang binanggit ko ay material, hindi water or hindi any object. No? Bakit material yung binanggit ko? Kasi uh, ang convection current ay also applicable sa air. So, yung material na yon na warm material rises, so it could be water, it could be air. And cold material sinks, it could be water and it could be air. So, sa case na to, water yung itinutukoy natin. So, the warm, the warm water rises, look at the arrow. 
So, yung mga, yung warm water ay yung nasa ibaba that represents the red molecules here. So, kung makita mo yung arrow nila, ay movement ay pataas. Kasi nga, nagpa-follow doon sa convection current. The warm water rises. And the cold material, which is nandun sa taas, ay bababa. The cold material sinks or the cold water sinks. So, this is a convection current. Naindilihan? So, paano natin yan i-apply sa usual or the day-to-day -day life basis? So, um, have you ever wondered bakit yung mga uh, aircon ay nasa itaas? Diba? Lagi nasa itaas. Pero may mga kwarto na nasa ibaba. But that doesn't follow, ibig sabihin yung uh, nito, yung convection current or yung principle of convection current. So basically, dapat ang aircon ay nasa itaas and yun naman yung usual scenario. So bakit yun yung usual scenario? Kasi nagpa-follow doon sa convection current. Diba, ang, ano ba yung nire-release na air ng aircon? Warm or cold? Cold. No? Cold. So tendencies, cold. kailangan yung cold air na yun ay maramdaman natin. Yun naman yung purpose, diba? ba? Ba't tayo nag-aircon para maramdaman natin yung lamig? Kasi mayroong temperature gradient or temperature difference. So, yung cold material, yung air na nire-release ng aircon ay cold, cold air. While yung temperature naman, yung air na nandito sa surrounding na nasa ibaba ay uh, warm. So, pag, pag yung aircon ay nasa itaas, then therefore, Pag nag-inon mo yung aircon mo, mag-release niya ng cold air. So, as it follows the principle of convection current, that air, cold air, sinks. Bababa yung cold air, mararamdaman natin. While yung warm air, while yung warm air naman na nasa surroundings ay aakyat. Inilihan. So, nagkakaroon ng movement. That is a convection current. Are we clear? Another example. Di ba, usually pag umaga, ayaw ninyong maligo kasi malamig. So, ang ginagawa ninyo kayo ay nagpapainit ng tubig. So, kapag uh, kapag binoiled, uh, dito, kapag pinoiled mo yung boiled water doon sa, let's say, sa basin ninyo or steam bath, kapag nilagay, uh, dito, nilagay mo yun, yung warm, mater yung warm water na yun ay mararamdaman mo usually doon sa saan? Sa itaas. Pero, pero habang papailalim na lang papailalim, uh, yung paubos na lang paubos ng tubig mo, yung yung tubig ay lumalamig na kahit pa ano. Di ba kapag gagawin mo doon, mar dapat maramdaman mo, ay, ititest mo kung gaano nakainit yung tubig. Kasi naglagay ka na ng mainit na tubig. Eh. So, ititest mo ngayon yung tubig doon sa timba kung gaano na siya kainit para malaman mo kung sapat na ba and so on. So, usually, pag, pag dito, sinok mo yung kamay mo doon sa timba, ang nararamdaman mo ay yung init agad. Na hindi niya. Kasi nga, yung warm water ay umakit na. So the warm water rises, the cold eh, and the cold water sinks. Another example, yun sa may um, bakit yung mga parents ninyo lagi kayo pinagbabawal o lagi sinasabi na wag kayo magbukas na magbukas ng ref. Dataas daw ang kuryente. So actually that is correct. So kapag inapply mo yung convection current, so paano natin i-apply yun? Yung uh, base, of course, yung temperature na nasa loob ng ref ay much colder. Mas malamig, di ba? So, malamig yung temperature ng nasa ref, nasa loob ng ref, while yung surrounding temperature naman sa labas ay warm. So, kapag bunuksan mo yung refrigerator ninyo, magkakaroon ba ng convection current doon or wala? Magkakaroon po ba or wala? Okay, nandiyan pa ba kayo? Oh. magkakaroon magkakaroon doon ng convection current sa so, paanong case take note, huwag niyo laging isipin ang convection current ay for liquid lang but convection current is applicable for both liquid and gas so sa, in, sa case na yun yung gas yung air na tinutukin natin so cold air yung nandoon sa loob ng, ng refrigerator while warm air naman yung nasa labas ng, temperature, ng, uh, ng refrigerator so kapag uh, binuksan mo yung rep papasok yung warm air. Mula sa labas ng, refriger ng refrigerator, papasok doon sa loob. Then, yung cold air naman na nandoon sa loob ng rep ay lalabas. Kaya nga, di ba, every time na binubuksan mo yung rep, nararamdaman mo yung lamig. 
kasi nagkakaroon ng convection current. Ngayon, dahil may pumasok na warm temperature or warm air doon sa rep, tendency is gagana na naman yung fridge ninyo o yung refrigerator ninyo, yung, yung machine doon or what, para palimigin ulit yung refrigerator. Kasi nagkaroon na ng temperature difference. Bumaba kahit pa paano yung, o tumaas rather, tumaas yung temperature kasi mayroong pumasok na warm air. Clear? So, yun sa case na yun, kaya yun kayo yung pinagbabawalan na huwag ka magbukas na magbukas ng refrigerator. Kasi di ba ang refrigerator ay uh, actually matipid ng refrigerator. Hindi yan kagaya ng aircon. So, ang, war- ang refrigerator, hindi naman every time yan, o 24 hours a day yan, nag-work. So, kapag malamig na, titigil na yon Titigil na yung paggana ng, tawag doon, makina niya. And so, makina ba? Tama ba yung term ko? So, titigil na siya sa pagpapalamig. Pero kapag, uh, sa case na maramdaman ng refrigerator na parang tumataas yung temperature, so, gagawin, gagana ulit. So, yun yung case. So, kapag may pumasok na warm temperature doon sa loob, sa loob ng ref, o gagana na naman yung refrigerator para palamigin ulit yung nasa loob niya. So, kaya tumataas yung electricity. So, anyway, ang kailangan ninyo maintindihan nito is yung process of convection current because convection current has something to do with the formation of magma. So, I hope you are all familiar or we are all familiar with what is magma and how is it different from lava. May I ask? Ay, wag na lang. So, mabilis na lang natin ito. So, of course, magma, it's a mixture of molten rock, minerals, and gases found beneath the Earth's surface. So, kapag nasa loob pa ng volcano, that is what you call magma. But when, uh, uh, when the molten material is already outside the volcano or in the Earth's crust na, that is already lava. And both magma and lava are the basis of all rock formation on Earth. Why is it so? Remember that during the previous discussion, the rock cycle, di ba? Sabi natin, rock cycle is a never-ending cycle. Hindi matatapos yon yung rock cycle. Why? Kasi sabi naman sa good mga classmates niyo doon, as long as mayroong magma, continuous ang creation ng other um, types of rocks. So kapag ang magma ay nag cools down, what type of rock will form? Oracle lang natin yung Intrusive. Mga... Okay, we have the intrusive igneous rock. And when the lava cools down and solidify, it will form? Extrusive. Okay, extrusive, extrusive okay. igneous rock. So once igneous rocks were already present, then the cycle will go on na. So magkakaroon ng weathering and erosion para mag-form ng sediments and the cycle goes on. So that is for the magma. Also, magmas are found deep in the crust or in the upper mantle. So, yung volcano, of course, yan ay matatagpuan sa Earth's crust. Pero yung magma source or yung magma chamber ay connected yan sa upper mantle. Now, the temperature of magma ranges from 700 to 1,300 degrees Celsius. So, this is the magma. Ang temperature niya ay ito. And take note, the melting temperature of rock ranges from 800 degrees Celsius to 14 degrees Celsius. So, kapag ito bang magma na ito, magma chamber na ito, of course, mayroong lithosphere dito. May mga rocks dyan. Kapag nagkaroon ng, cam- nagkaroon ng contact ang rocks dito sa magma, magme-melt ba ang, tem- ang rocks or hindi? Ano po ulit, miss? Ah, ulitin ko. Kapag itong magma na ito, ang magma daw sabi ay temperature niya ay 700 to 1,300 degrees Celsius. Let's say for example, a rocks came in contact with the magma. Ang rocks daw, or certain rocks, let's say igneous rock or sedimentary rock, nagkaroon ng contact doon sa magma. Magme-melt down ba ang rocks or hindi? Magme-melt. Okay, magme-melt. And kapag nag-melt ang rocks, ang mapo-form ay magma ulit. Hindihan. So kung makikita ninyo yung rock cycle, di ba? Kung mga metamorphic rock ay ma-expose sa magma, magma-melt down ito and so on. So, kaya hindi na ubos yung sources of magma. And therefore, rocks, rock cycle is a never-ending cycle. So the question is, how is magma formed? Paano na form yung magma? And uh, we have two. So we have the decompression melting. 
May I ask John Paul Gonzalez to I John Paul Gonzalez John Paul Granaderos to please read what is the compression melting. John Paul, please read. Ayan, tulog na naman siya. O Simon the Mundon. Paul Simon. Tulog na naman. Okay, who would like to read? The compression melting. Ako na lang, miss. Okay, apilado. Please read. Decompression melting occurs where, where in hot material in the mantle rises to lower pressure areas but carrying with it, with it is heat resulting to partial melting. Partial melting, okay. So, uh, para mas maintindihan natin what is decompression melting, let us use this diagram. So, are you all familiar with the sea floor spreading? So, I, ho I, I believe when you were in grade 10, na discuss itong sea floor spreading. So, di ba, you are all familiar with the continental drift theory by Alfred Legendre. So, para masuportahan yung continental drift theory, Harry has pro um, proposed the sea floor spreading. So, if you haven't uh, remember, if you, can, if you can't remember what is a sea floor spreading, kuwain yun ang idea ng sea and floor. So, ito yung sea floor mismo, yung oceanic crust. The crust, the earth's crust, is divided or has a two types. We have the continental crust and the oceanic crust. So, pag sinabing continental crust, ito yung lupa o ito yung rocks, no? Na, ayan, when you go outside your house, yung aapakan ninyo, that is a continental crust. No? Ang mga volcano, mountain, yun ay uh, located sa continental crust. That, uh, while yung oceanic crust naman, Ito yung rock bottom o yung ocean bed, uh, yung rocks that are found doon sa ay lalim ng dagat sa ocean bottom. No? So kahit gaano kalalim yung dagat na yun, meron yung rocks sa pinakailalim. So that is what you call oceanic crust. Oceanic crust actually malapit na siya doon sa uh, tinitawag natin muhorovisic discontinuity o yung layer that separates the lithosphere and the upper mantle. So, sa ilalim ng continental crust and ng oceanic crust, nandoon ang lithosphere, that is still a rocks. And then, the layer between the lithosphere and the upper mantle, upper mantle that is the moho discontinuity. Kung na-explain uh, na sa inyo yun before, yun lang yung nag-layer na separate sa lithosphere at sa upper mantle. Now, sa so case na to, sabi rito, sea floor spreading. Nag-spread yung sea floor o yung mismong oceanic crust. Right? So, di ba, sa grade, nung grade 10 kayo, um, dinis kasi nyo yung different plate boundaries. We have the convergent boundary, divergent, and transform. So, sa case na to, look at the arrow. What plate boundary does it represent? Is it convergent, divergent, or transform? Okay, so Lorenzana is correct. That is divergent. So, when you look at the arrow, the movement of the arrow is in opposite direction. Kapag opposite, opposite direction ng movement, that is divergent boundary. So, ibig sabihin, may, some, may force na humahatak doon sa oceanic crust and sa continental crust. Kaya naman, as it separates, no, lit, yung movement naman niya ay of course, ano lang, centimeter lang yung movement niya. Hindi niya. So, hindi yung massive na ganun kalawa kagad yung nahihiwalay. So, kung tinitin ninyo, as the, as the sea floor spreads, or as the oceanic, cru oceanic crust spreads, mayroong space gap o mayroong nag uh, dito na napuproduce na gap o yung space. So, yung space na yan, o itong part na ito na tinitukoy ng uh, laser pointer natin, yun yung tinitawag natin as ridge, another landform. Kumaga, so, sa case na yan, dahil ang temperature sa oceanic crust ay di hamak na mas mababa compared sa temperature na nandito sa upper mantle, mas mataas yun. Now, i-apply natin ang convection current. Sabi sa, sabi sa convection current, the warm material rises. So, sa case na to, nasaan ang warm material? Nasa oceanic crust ba 
or nasa mantel. Nasa mantel po. Okay, nasa mantel. Kasi yung mantel natin ay magma yan, di ba? So, the, ma the mantel, uh, the, uh, the magma here will rise. Aakit siya kasi sabi ko, based convection current. So, aakit yung warm material dito or yung magma itself. Therefore, itong lithosphere na yan, which is said to be rocks, magkakaroon ng contact dito sa magma. At ang sabi natin, ang temperature ng magma ay 700 to 1,300 degree Celsius. At ang melting temperature ng rocks ay 800 to 14 degree Celsius. So let's say for example, dito sa lithosphere, ang, ang melting temperature niya ay uh, 1000 degree Celsius. Pasok siya doon sa temperature ng magma. So tendency is magmi-melt yung mga rocks na nandirito sa lithosphere. At kapag nag-melt ang lithosphere o yung mga rocks na nandirito sa lithosphere, magpo-form ito ng magma. And that is what you call decompression melting or magkakaroon ng partial melting. Are we clear? Okay po. Okay. So I hope everyone... Miss, ano... Yes. Ano rin po, di ba, kunyari, napunta, yung na-melt na po yung sa lithosphere. So, iinit na po yung sunod na, yung layer po ng lithosphere. E di ibig sabihin po yung sa oceanic crust po. Pwede rin po yung convection dun kasi po, di ba, yung lithosphere, uminit po. So, iinit din po yung tubig. Yes. Tama po Kaya ba? nga, totoo yun. Tama yun. When you go deeper dun sa ocean, mainit ang temperature dun. Kaya nga, uh, may, walang mga sea creatures na kayang mag-resist ng init dun. Kaya walang nabubuhay dun. Ang mga organisms lang na kayang mag-resist dun sa init na nasa pinakailalim ng dagat ay usually mga bacteria. Pwede rin ang mga phytoplanktons. Kasi kaya nilang mag-resist ng heat. Pero yung mga isda, hindi nila kaya yon Kaya nandun lang sila sa, uh, pwede sa ibabaw, pwede sa middle layer. Pero when you go deeper, pinakailalim, hindi nila kaya. Kasi mainit yung temperature. Are we clear? So, nagkakaroon din ng yes, convection current. So, basically, when you say decompression melting, that is accompanied with the process of divergent boundary. So look at this. This is a convection current. So the warm material, ito po, the warm material rises as the continents or as the plates are moving in opposite direction. Look at the movement. Nagmumove sila in opposite direction, di ba? For me, nagkakaroon dito ng gap, which is what we call the oceanic ridge or the mid-ocean ridge. So as the warm material rises, yung mga uh, rocks dito that are found sa lithosphere ay nag-melt down to form a magma. Now, kung titinan nyo dito sa case na to, nagkakaroon ng divergent dito, but sa case na to, sa dulo, anong boundary yan? Anong type of plate boundary yun na kagaganap sa kabilang dulo? Look, look at the video. Anong another plate boundary yun? ba dito ay divergent. Ito ay divergent boundary. Pero sa kamagkabilang dulo niya, dito sa layer na ito, sa part na yun at sa part na ito, anong plate boundary na yan? Convergent. Okay, convergent boundary na yun. So, sa convergent boundary naman, ang nagaganap ay flux melting. So, uh, may I ask Gosson to please read what is flux melting? Flux melting. Happens when very high temperature material in the mantle is added with water vapor and CO2. Oh, CO2 or carbon dioxide. So, uh, how is flux melting happening? You know? So, sa case na to, we have the convergent boundary. And convergent boundary is the movement of plates in, uh, or, or rather, movement of plates towards each other. So, same direction siya. So, take note, ang convergent boundary ay pwedeng maganap into three. We have the um, uh, convergent boundary of the continental to continental plates. So, continental crust and continental crust converge to one another. But, but pag continental to continental crust, hindi nagpo-form ng magma. Naininihan? Ang nagpo-form po doon ay mga mountain range. So, yung mga bulubundukin, no? So, katulad ng Sierra Madre and so on. So, that is caused by the uh, movement of the continental plates or the continental, continental to continental. So, moving towards each other. So, paano ngayon nagpo-form ng magma? 
um, dito magpo-form, magpo-form ang magma kapag continental to oceanic crust. Hindi ha, nang nag-converge. Pwede rin ang, con- ang oceanic crust to oceanic crust. So, magpo-form ng magma. Pero kapag continental to continental, hindi ito magpo-form. So, sa case na to, sa diagram ito, ang nag-converge ay continental and oceanic crust. So, this is the continental crust. Ito yung mountain. Ah, ito yung volcano. Look at this. So, ito yung surface ng Earth's crust. Then, ito naman, it, yung rock boat, uh, yung ocean bottom. So, it represents the um, the oceanic crust. So, oceanic crust and con- continental crust converge. Mag, mag, uh, nag-move in, toward each other. So, sa case na yon, every time na nagkakaroon ng convergent boundary, accompany dito with subduction. O mayroon tayo yung tinatawag na subduction zone. Ibig sabihin, mayroong pumapailalim. So, hanggang ang movement ay toward each other, mayroong papailalim. So, ano yung papailalim doon? Usually, yung sino yung denser? Sino yung mas nabigat? And sino yung mas older? Yan yung type of rock. So, usually, ang mga uh, rocks na older ay matatagpuan sa ocean floor or sa sea floor. So, usually, ang nagsasabduct ay yung uh, oceanic crust. So, sa case na to, ang oceanic crust yung nagsabduct. Take note, may presence ng water, may presence ng water dito. So, yung water din ay kasama sa magsasabduct. And kapag ang water ay na-expose into high temperature or extreme temperature, magmabo, magbo-boil and it will start to evaporate, forming the water vapor. Now, the water vapor and the carbon dioxide will act para mag-undergo ng process of flux melting. So, sa case na to, this is a lithosphere, another lithosphere. So, itong lithosphere na ito na nagsabduct, next, nagkaroon ng contact within the magma na nasa upper mantle, of course, magbo-boil, ay magbo-boil, magmi-melt. Magmi-melt yung rocks dito, magpo-form ng magma. Ngayon, itong rocks na itong lithosphere na ito, o itong oceanic crust na ito, ay meron din kasamang water. So, yung water ay mag-starts to evaporate, magpo-form ng water vapor, Ngayon, mag-act siya dito sa lithosphere na ito, another part dito sa oceanic, sa continental crust, yung lithosphere sa ilalim ng continental crust. So, mangyari, magme-melt din yung mga rocks na nandito. So, forming magma na magiging source ng uh, volcano, magiging magma chamber. So, look at this video. Carefully study the video. May nagaganap bang subduction zone dyan? Look. May nagaganap bang subduction zone or wala? Meron po. Okay, meron. So, kung nag-convergent boundary, so this is the continental crust. So, this is a GIF. So this is a convergent boundary. This is ocean, oceanic, uh, convergent, continental crust rather, continental crust and oceanic crust. So yung oceanic crust yung uh, nagsabdak. So may yung mga rocks dito ay natuna kasi nagkaroon ng contact dito sa ma- magma na nasa upper mantle. And then the water water here starts to evaporate, then forming water vapor, and then ang cause na ng melting of rocks. Ito na yung magma ngayon. So, yung magma ngayon, ngayon yung naging source for as magma chamber for a volcan- for a active volcano. Here, so an active volcano, as we have all defined, it has a magma source or a magma chamber. So, bakit nagiging active ang volcano? Dahil mayroong nagaganap na subduction zone para, magkar- para mag-form ng magma source. Ito yung magma ngayon. Caused by flux melting. So, are we clear? I hope everyone is clear with a different mode of ano, formation of magma. So, recall lang natin, we have decompression melting. And in the decompression melting, what type of plate boundary is accompanied? Anong plate boundary ang... Divergent po. Okay. Divergent. We have divergent. While... For the flux melting, what type of plate boundary? Convergent. convergent. Okay, convergent. Now, what about transform? So, di ba, we have convergent, divergent, and transform. Pag transform, wala doon makikreate na magma. 
<coughs> hindi rehard. Ano po form lang sa transform boundary ay earthquake. So, katulad ng earthquake and faults and so on. So, katulad ng San Andreas Fault, that is caused by the transform plate boundary. And that's all. Now, what happens now after the magma is formed? There would be a crystallization of magma. So, itong crystallization that we are referring to is simply the minerals. Minerals will form once the magma cools and solidify. And what specific type of magma, uh, what specific type of minerals will form? Is it intrusive or extrusive? Extrusive po. Extrusive for magma? We're dealing with... Ay, magma. intrusive po. Yes, okay. Now that is correct. We have the intrusive kasi magma ito eh. But kapag nag-volcanic eruption na, yung magma... Kapag lava po pala yung ano, extrusive. Yes, correct. So, pag yung volcanic eruption na, yung lava, yung nag and solidify, that is uh, extrusive igneous rock. And extrusive, ay, extrusive igneous rock, extrusive minerals. So, extrusive and intrusive has a different, uh, uh, in, different sila in terms of its size. So, mas malaki ng diha makin na sa, napoform sa magma. And that's all. That's the end of our discussion. So, have you learned something today? <clears throat> May natutunan po ba ngayong araw na ito?